This session is uh, around the Intelligent ERP with S4 HANA Cloud. And my name is uh, Stephen Kim, and I'm part of uh, S4 HANA product management team. And I'm based uh, out of uh, Palo Alto, California. And all the content I will be sharing today is uh, more future directional. Uh, so not everything SAP is uh, committing to deliver, but directionally, this is uh, what we are planning to develop. So quick agenda, we will look into Bohana. And S Bohana especially has a lot of uh, new technologies that are embedded in. So how we are building uh, intelligent analytics and intelligent data platform as a uh, underlying uh, architecture. And then on top of that, we are building new capabilities like uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, as well as uh, robotics process automation and conversational AI. So those will be the main topics for today. So all these are new technologies uh, you have seen, uh, but well, you don't have to build it as a standalone separate uh, technology implementation, but s hana will be delivering all these as a part of our embedded capabilities. So if you deploy s hana you can just enable uh, these capabilities within s hana and take advantage of uh, these new technologies coming up in the future releases. So in a nutshell, what SAP s hana is trying to do is uh, future ready your enterprise so you don't have to look into this each individual technologies and implement it separately. But s hana will embed all this as uh, you need it. You can just uh, enable and consume these technologies and you can take advantage of uh, all the new technologies like machine learning, RPA, as a part of uh, s hana And a lot of content that are delivered here are focusing on s hana Cloud. But s hana Cloud is just uh, more upfront and it's a quarterly release but we will be accumulating, consolidating all the cloud features and every annual, uh, right now it's uh, 1909. So on on-premise, these uh, uh, new innovations will be made available in a more annual basis. So this is uh, focusing on cloud and all these features are available in cloud now, but down the road, this will be also made available in on-prem uh, Espohana versions as well. So if you look at the artificial intelligence, key here is uh, every company need, uh, have looked into machine learning or artificial intelligence, and they are sitting on a lot of data. Sometimes it's uh, SPOHANA or ERP data. Other times it's uh, other IoT data or other big data outside of SAP systems. But the key is uh, in order to transform your business, and really drive a digital transformation and build a new business processes. People are looking into uh, big data as well as uh, trying to build a machine learning and artificial intelligence based applications. But not many customers are succeeding uh, in this journey. The key, based on the surveys from others, uh, Gartner and McKinsey and others, pretty much uh, 85% of uh, all the AI or machine learning initiatives fail to make it to production. So they still live in, in a pilot and proof of concept, but when they are trying to roll it out to live uh, environment or production environment, they are failing. And the main reason uh, is a lot of these uh, AI machine learning scenarios are looking into the data, but data itself is not standardized and not clean, not clean enough to build a machine learning algorithm or models and train them. So the key here, several uh, problems, but one problem is a data quality problem. And another problem is the expertise. There are a lot of uh, data scientists or machine learning specialists, but still a lot of uh, these technologies are in early stage. So there might be some people who are experts in TensorFlow or Python or R, but not, they may not be uh, experts in s hana or IoT. So putting that together, the technological expertise and business processes and data quality, that's very challenging. So everyone bringing that together, whether data scientists or business process owners or data quality 
uh, experts, bringing that together and then running a successful proof of concept and pilot and then rolling it out to the production environment. That's the uh, idea or scenario, but that's very challenging and very few companies are successful uh, running uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning scenarios and rolling it out across their enterprises. So based on other survey, basically enterprises are struggling to implement artificial intelligence. Many, 67% are considering uh, machine learning or AI implementations and that's very critical for their businesses to advance and introduce a new uh, capabilities, but only 33% are confident their IT team is uh, able to deliver this as a machine learning AI solution to their end users. So there is a gap between. The need is there, but not everyone is uh, ready to do that. Some parts are data problem, others are the experts on machine learning or TensorFlow. You, don't, you may not have that. So another thing is uh, when we look into AI. A lot of AI projects uh, uh, live as a standalone, independent project, uh, working on some, some type of a data. But when you say enterprise AI, this needs to be tightly integrated to your production system. Sometimes it's uh, S4HANA or ECC, and other times uh, combining other data from IoT devices or other machinery data or data pictures or video streams. So tying that together and then building end-to-end -end, uh, streamlined business process that can impact uh, ERP or ECC. So that's uh, where we see the enterprise AI. It's not just uh, AI as a standalone, but end-to-end -end business processes. So to orchestrate that, what we see is machine learning algorithm and training is just the only one component of that, but there are a lot that happens before and after. And also there are a lot of uh, additional technologies uh, that you need to combine with machine learning. So the key aspect here is uh, data quality and also managing the data. So data may come from uh, ECC or S4, but there may be other data sources, so whether it's uh, the fire server or IoT sensors. So you should be able to combine that data and then uh, from that data drive a machine learning algorithm or RPA business processes or additional scenarios. So one thing we see is uh, that uh, managing the data from multiple sources, sometimes it can be structured data, other times it can be unstructured data, sometimes it can come from SAP systems, other times it can come from third-party systems or other IoT machinery systems, but combining that is a uh, key. So to do that, you need a very robust uh, data intelligence platform, and we are building that uh, with SAP Cloud Platform and Data Intelligence Platform, and embedding that as a part of uh, S4HANA, so you can then build uh, those uh, data management platform in SAP environment. And then after that, managing that development. Just uh, once you understand the data, you will need to develop machine learning algorithm or RPA processes. SAP has been investigating a lot into different data models and where you see most uh, demand from customers. So we have built a lot of uh, use cases and we are starting to embed a lot of uh, machine learning, RPA, conversational AI scenarios in S4. But in addition to that, once you have uh, this platform, you can build uh, your own additional machine learning scenarios or models and train them. And then delivery, managing delivery, testing this out across the different users, across different systems, and then rolling out to the production. So to get to real production, and roll it out enterprise AI scenarios in production, we see these three uh, very key steps, and SAP is uh, providing the infrastructure for you to uh, gather data and build a development and deploy it, and then manage it through the delivery. So if you look at the data more, uh, the first part is a more data intelligent and data intelligent management. So here, 
we can gather data sources from different systems, whether it's a structured, unstructured, SAP, non-SAP. So that's a big part. Another capability is uh, allowing, to, allowing you to compose and uh, conduct and orchestrate all that uh, machine learning algorithm or RPA processes. That's a key. And once you do that, testing it out and deploying it to s or also other SAP applications. So if you look at it, it's a, if you just uh, apply this to more human aspects of an intelligent, so in the, at the heart, there is uh, intelligent applications like uh, s -Bohana or any other cloud applications that are running. So those are more transactional applications that are heart and core of uh, your system. But on top of that, we have uh, machine learning. That's the brain uh, thinking part. Machine learning or intelligent data intelligence. So that part, analyzing your data, you will be able to predict what's happening. You will be able to forecast what's happening. So a lot of uh, predictive analytics that are embedded or a lot of uh, prediction, forecast related uh, capabilities we are building that's uh, based on machine learning algorithm. Another part is uh, conversational AI, more listening, speaking. So here, you, we, what we are seeing is uh, a lot of data is uh, not just the structured data. You are seeing uh, receiving a lot of data in different formats. If, for example, if you are thinking of uh, sales orders, sales orders may come in many different formats. Sometimes uh, you can receive email with attachment, either PDF or Excel Word document, or other times it can be voicemails or fax machine. So there, in order to handle all different types of uh, incoming sales orders, we will need to listen and uh, understand what those are, and then convert that into something that machine can understand. So here we are talking about conversational AI, chatbot, or copilot to handle those uh, incoming voice messages. Also others like OCR to scan the fax documents or others and convert that into the document that machine can understand. Or it can be natural language processing, and also the computer vision. So if it's a video or images coming in, you know, from there you can extract enough data elements to create uh, something that's uh, enterable into S4 and other systems. So this uh, listening and speaking part. So this is uh, your ear and eye. So you can listen and you can see and try to extract enough data elements to enter into the system. And then the other part is the uh, action part. So that's where uh, RPA comes in, robotic process automation. So a lot of times, uh, once you understand this is uh, data that can be entered, maybe there are a lot of uh, places where uh, your clerks or your office uh, people are doing manual data entry, whether it's a general ledger, general entry, or whether it's a purchase requisition, or sales order entry, or uh, physical inventory count entry. A lot of that is a very repetitive data entry. In those cases, we can automate that. If you provide a, uh, Excel or uh, uh, others uh, XML based, we can build the R RPA, but you can automatically enter those data entries. So you don't have to do the, all the data entry yourself, but you can collaborate with machine, and those uh, bots, RPA bots, will do the data entry on your behalf. So that's the kind of uh, the area we are focusing on to really improve the intelligence of the system and identify areas where we can predict and forecast, and also in other areas where we can convert all different types of documents into something standardized and structured. And when it's possible uh, to automate that data entry so we can process that together. So there are a lot of technologies that are mentioned here, conversational AI, RPA, machine learning. But we are applying this to business processes and combining this. Uh, uh, by combining this, we are automating many business processes. So we will quickly look into the data intelligence platform first. And then on top of that, how we are building machine learning, 
RPA and conversational AI use cases. So if you look at the data intelligence platform first, so this is uh, where we are embedding our data intelligence and analytics capabilities. That's uh, available in cloud platform, but we are embedding this in S4 HANA. So a lot of these uh, familiar capabilities, like uh, accessing data from different, uh, and then connecting the data, but also cleansing the data, and then uh, building a data model to run machine learning and different things, and uh, monitor and orchestration. So this one I'll quickly go through. So it's uh, first connecting data from different sources, from structured, unstructured, SAP, or non-SAP data. And then once you do that, the next is uh, learning from the data. So there are different things like a data hub, also the data preparation and building machine learning algorithm and deep learning scenarios. And then on top of that, uh, you can do the uh, train the uh, model and you can enhance that further. So this will allow you to scale uh, the data model and then deploy this to uh, your production environment. So this is a very, at a high level, how the data intelligence platform is a foundation of uh, AI, in the enterprise level artificial intelligence uh, data uh, solutions. So this uh, gather data from ERP or ESPO, but combine data from other sources, and then uh, build a machine learning model or algorithm and try to automate that. So that's a kind of a foundation uh, layer. So what uh, data intelligence for enterprise AI does is uh, three things mainly. It creates and deploys, and then it understands a data model and explores, and it allows you to automate and scale across your business processes. So one, there are several different ways to deploy. So one key is uh, basically this uh, data intelligence platform will serve as a, a kind of a repository uh, to gather data from S4 and other cloud applications and build an embedded uh, scenario in S4. But others here in the middle, it can be integrated to IoT or others. Also, it can act as a more data warehousing scenario. But in this uh, session, we will focus on the first scenario how this uh, data intelligence uh, platform can be used to uh, uh, build embedded scenario in S4 HANA. So this is a, uh, just a very quick process and how data intelligence platform can be used to build a S4 HANA AI or machine learning scenarios. So if you look at the machine learning or conversational AI, we are now using that data intelligence uh, platform as a uh, underlying platform, and then on top of that, building machine learning scenarios. So here, uh, we, what we did is uh, we worked with many co-innovation customers and identified the uh, use cases where it makes sense to deploy machine learning scenarios. So, so it can span across uh, finance, like a cash application, to procurement or manufacturing, but we are still continuing to find uh, uh, new scenarios and also discover new scenarios where we can apply machine learning uh, algorithm. So we already have uh, developed a lot and deployed, but we are also looking for new ideas as well. So there are three main areas. Uh, one is uh, around the machine learning scenarios, but uh, to optimize, this is uh, your brain. So once you understand the data business processes, how can you make an intelligent decision out of it? What can you predict? What can you optimize? So that's uh, where you apply machine learning. And then second part is uh, more conversational AI or co-pilot or uh, sometimes uh, we, we have also acquired a company called the Recast to build a more uh, sidecar scenarios as well. So this is a more how you collaborate with your customers or others on different user interface. And then on transform side, uh, leveraging RPA, how you can automate a lot of data entries or uh, automate data processes. So looking into more embedded intelligence and more machine learning scenarios. 
And this is a typical uh, use case. So you can do the prediction as well as a forecast, and you can build a machine learning scenarios, and then you can train the scenarios and then roll it out. So these are potential uh, areas where you can apply uh, machine learning. And after several co-innovation projects and surveying customers' input, we uh, developed a lot of uh, machine learning scenarios and rolled this out since the last year. So there are several uh, things, but this uh, highlights how the key process is how we develop machine learning scenarios and roll it out in S4. So first we identify the use cases, and then we collect the data, and then also using uh, different data models from customers. So customers may have a different data model for different objects like a sales order, invoice, and purchase requisition. And we build a more machine learning model and algorithm, and we test that, and then we train them across the multiple data sets. So this is a more continuous uh, refinement, and we are still improving the algorithm. But once we reach certain level of uh, confidence, we are rolling that out as a standard product. So here, there are several uh, examples that we rolled out. One is a predictive stock in transit. So this is a predictive in transit stock and inventory level. Another one here is a uh, in procurement, goods received and invoice received. So once you receive an uh, invoice, uh, matching that to goods received and doing 3A matching. So instead of uh, doing manual matching, uh, machine learning algorithm will find the right uh, receive and right purchase order and do the 3A matching automatically. And then another one is uh, in procurement area, also the catalog and making contract items. So if there are certain items that are requisitioned and then created as a PO, but it should be uh, created against a particular contract, or later on, it should populate another contract line item, a machine learning algorithm is identifying those, so you can reduce the Maverick spend or off-contract spend uh, from requisition and purchase order perspective. So this is uh, what we delivered already. So there are uh, Q3, Q4, uh, 19. So these are the scenarios we already, machine learning scenarios we already delivered in S4 HANA Cloud. But this, some of these will make it into 1909 on-prem as well. So, but we, in the quarterly release, as you can see, we are delivering more and more scenarios uh, that are relevant for finance or procurement or manufacturing as well. So one in particular, the one scenario that has uh, most adoption so far is uh, in finance area. That's called the cash application. So if you receive a payment from customer, matching that payment to AR invoice at the line level or lockbox level, so that's uh, done automatically. And we have uh, more than 20 customers who are actively implementing, and about seven of them are already live with this uh, AR uh, cash application processes. So that's uh, one that we see most adoption, but also in other areas, as I mentioned, uh, uh, AR, uh, the uh, goods received, and invoice received matching is on also another area. And also in more professional services environment, uh, the managing the project attributes, like uh, which uh, consultants are assigned to which project and project duration updates and things like that. So those are also handled as uh, machine learning scenarios. But these are the things that are planned in the next uh, couple of releases. But if you have any other scenario you think is uh, relevant and uh, we should look into, we are open for suggestion. So please reach out to us and let us know. And if you look at uh, another area, conversational AI. So this is a uh, co-pilot or conversational AI. So co-pilot is uh, more of a embedded uh, application uh, with S4, but conversational AI is a more uh, underlying technology. So what here we are doing is uh, there are a lot of uh, things that people can ask. And based on that, uh, using chatbot, you can respond 
but also not just respond, but you can uh, suggest next steps, right? So if there are some examples here, let's say, do you want to create a new project? And if uh, the answer is a yes, based on that, you can open up the next uh, screen where you can create the project. Or if you want to find a sales order or sales territory, you can open up uh, the existing sales orders or you can reach out to a salesperson directly. So this is not just a informational conversation, but from here, you can also make a recommendations or you can open up another application so people can uh, do the follow-up activities uh, on the uh, next UI. So this is a conversational AI or co-pilot is uh, another interaction point, but from here you can uh, reach out to different scenarios. So this is a more on the sales order or procurement or professional service scenario, but you can think of applying this to other finance use cases or HR use cases or customer service use cases. There are a lot of other additional use cases that we are currently exploring and discussing with customers. Moving on to the next topic is uh, RPA, Robotic Process Automation. So this one, uh, maybe everyone has heard of RPA, but this is a pretty much automating uh, different uh, business transactions. And data entry, if it's repairable, you can build a bot to do the data entry itself. So it can be extracted from the other Excel or other machinery data. And then once it's understandable uh, by the machine, uh, basically bot can be created as a background process and then automatically process the uh, transactions. So bot, also we provide a tool to create bot, but also we are embedding a lot of uh, bots that are already implemented. And we, we already have uh, released about 15 bots, but we are releasing about five to six bots every month. So by the end of uh, nine, uh, 19, 2019, we are planning to release about 80 bots uh, across all Espohana scenarios. So this is uh, just a process, uh, very similar. And a lot of these uh, bots are more UI-based, but what we see is more and more need to build a more API-based bot. So a lot of scenarios, we support both UI as well as API. So you don't have to tie up any laptop or machine, but if you schedule it as a background, the API will grab the file, whether it's Excel or XML, and process this and automate that. So with that, actually, I will show you, let's see, system where you can see some of the... Oh, I got locked down. Okay, so this is the area where you can see. So this is a bot and you can see different agents and also you can see how these are triggered. So if you, this is a kind of a monitoring tool. You can see some has a failed, some has a succeeded and you can see all these are bots like a past seven days, past 30 days, how these bots are processed and different uh, transactions. So that's uh, one area I wanted to show. And another is uh, this one. These are the areas where all these bots are already available. So if you go to uh, rapid.sap.com and BP, best practices, these are already available in public site. So you can look for uh, things that's available for uh, cloud or on-prem. If you select it, you will be able to see these are RPA bots that are already made available. So there are a lot in uh, cloud. So here you can see there were some of the things like uh, goods movement, physical inventory, and GL journal entry. So these bots are all available across the uh, finance, procurement, and manufacturing. So you can uh, download this and then test it out. And if you click one of that, you can see more details about yeah, all of this and configuration. So you can download a, a file and then you know, deploy it 
in here and then also monitor it, how it uh, progresses. So this is already a valuable. So if you want to test it out, even without in your production environment, you can do it in this uh, cloud environment. And once you are comfortable, uh, you can uh, deploy it in your system. Also, if you want to configure and change some uh, things, also there is a tool that's available. You can download and do the configuration. So this is a high level how RPA works. And basically RPA is, uh, the value of RPA is uh, improving the operational efficiency so it can free up your workers, whether it's a finance person entering general entry or procurement person processing requisitions or supply chain, uh, manufacturing clock doing the physical inventory or the sh sh shipping orders or picking list. That can be automated. They may be able to do their work, but once they do their work in either pen and paper or Excel, they don't have to come to uh, the laptop and do the data entry at the end of their shift, but they can create that Excel file uh, that will convert it into uh, RPA, and RPA bot will do the data entry automatically. And if that handles 99% uh, of a data entry, maybe they can just handle the 1% of exception and manage that. So that's a kind of a, a scenario we see. And these are the RPA uh, scenarios that are already uh, deployed. So in general ledger, we see uh, journal entry and also payment advances, and also in procurement, creating uh, requisitions or purchase orders, as well as uh, the physical inventory in manufacturing. But there are a lot of additional uh, scenarios, as you can see. Uh, that uh, we are planning to deliver in the next uh, six to nine months. So actually, this is uh, all the prepared content, and I can go a little bit deeper into each scenario, but I think this is uh, good enough. <laughs>